All right, if you'll turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Be looking at verses 14 through 21. And when you get there, please stand and, and I'll read the Word of God. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his vows of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your word this morning. And Lord, we pray that... Uh, you can give a message to each one of us. Lord, I pray that uh, they don't hear me speaking, but Lord, they hear you speaking. And Lord, that it's your message that they receive. And I pray that uh, every one of us here can take something from it. Lord, uh, that we can be a better Christian, a better disciple, a better follower of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, that we can, uh, uh, use, that we can be used to build each other up. Lord, we just thank you and Lord, we praise you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, a prevalent theme in the book of 1 John uh, is love. And, you know, we, when, when you think about love, most of the time we think about the heart. You know, especially here it being Valentine's Day, you know, we see hearts everywhere. You know, whether it be in Valentine's or in candy or, or whatever it is. Even on Sarah and Savannah's clothes, they're wearing clothes reflective of Valentine's Day. But, uh-huh. And it's become, the heart has become a symbol. It symbolizes love, and, and people use it to symbolize, you know, who we are a lot of times, whether we've got a good heart, a soft heart, or a heart of stone. And it's used many times in the Bible to reflect on someone's character and who we are in Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible doesn't really make reference to the heart literally, um, and a lot of times, maybe if it's translated heart, or we see in this scripture bowels, a lot of times the original word actually denotes kidneys. You know, the deep down inside being of a person. And so when the heart is mentioned in the Bible, it's referring to our innermost being. It's referring to our seat of intellect, emotions, our will, our moral consciousness. You know, it's become synonymous with our thoughts. When we talk about the heart of man, it's, it's who that man is on the inside. And a lot of times that includes our thoughts. And so that's what I kind of wanted to focus on this morning is who we are on the inside. And, and mo mainly what our thoughts say about us and, and who we are. And that to me, there's one of the, when I, when my relationship with God changed and I came back to being who I needed to be in Christ, that was something that kind of struck me is that our thoughts mean a lot. And, and, and I'm going to get into that this morning. So when we look in the Bible, our thoughts, the Bible says that we are our thoughts. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And there's a quote, and we may, you may have heard it before. It says, We are not what we think we are. What we think we are. So what's that saying is how we think is who we are. Now that's not, that's not talking about okay, the way a person thinks is how they act. But it's saying how you think, that's what you are. You know, we, uh, in Matthew 15, Jesus says sin comes from the heart. It says out of what comes out of the belly, what comes out of the mouth, that's what defiles. And so... We look at verse 15, 
It says, Whoever, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. So if you have those thoughts, you are a murderer. We look in uh, Matthew 5, 28, when it talks about if a man look upon a woman with lust, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. That is, you have become an adulterer if you think that way. You are what your thoughts say you are. You know, you look at verse 17 here in this scripture, it's talking about shutting up his bowels of compassion. That's when we see somebody that, uh, that has need and we become apathetic. You know, we may not have hate in our heart, but if you shut up your bowels of compassion from helping that individual, you've become apathetic. That's who you are. You know, you, can, you might can act a certain way, but if you feel that way, if you shut up your heart and you close your heart down, you have become a seat of apathy. You know, so verse 18, when it says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And what I look, in deed, of course, that means action, but in truth. You know, when we look at what is truth considered, what is our truth? That's who we are. Now, it's not relative, but our truth says who we are. And that comes from our thoughts. That comes from our mind. Okay, so we may think, okay, I'm not... Uh, I haven't looked upon anybody with lust, or I haven't said that I hate somebody, so this stuff doesn't apply to me. And so we look in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. It says, Follow peace with all men, and holiness, <coughs> without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. There's a lot of people that are defiled by what we call a root of bitterness, what the book of Hebrews calls it. And that root of bitterness can come from many different things. Okay, and that's not having hate in your heart to somebody, but that's maybe despising certain things about them. I think it's prevalent in the church. You know, we may not like how some people do things or may how they go about doing things. It's not that it's unbiblical, it's just that we don't like it. You know, and we become bitter towards that person and the things they try to do. And so that is very prevalent in the church, especially when the writer of Hebrews, he's talking to the church. He's talking to Hebrews that have been scattered about. And so he's saying, keep a watch out for this root of bitterness. So not, you know, we may not say that we hate our brother. We may not look at upon a woman with lust or, or we may not be apathetic. But sometimes I think every one of us it, it has become bitter against somebody in some way. And the, the writer of Hebrews is warning us there that we need to keep a watch on it, keep a check on it, that that doesn't defile us. That root of bitterness can defile us and become sin. Now, you know, our thoughts are very important but the thing is, if we don't keep a handle on our thoughts, our thoughts are not good. They're evil, and they're unholy. And, and we see in Scripture, we can look in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And some of you may know what this verse is. But Genesis 6, 5 is right before the flood. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only continually evil. Okay, so it says, Every thoughts of the heart of every man was continually evil. Now we may look to that's before the flood. He destroyed everybody. But we look in Jeremiah 17, 9. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? So our thoughts, I think a lot of times if we leave ourselves to our own devices and our own thought life, they're not good. You know, they're evil thoughts. They, they are sinful thoughts. And so what I think we've got to remember is we got to know that we will have to account for our thoughts and what's in our hearts. You know, again, that's who we are. And we will have to account for that. Verse 20 makes a reference of what we've been reading here, for if our heart condemn us. Okay, that if, it's almost, to me, I look at it as a when. For when our heart condemn us. You know, our heart condemns us in a lot of things, whether it be hate 
lust, apathy, bitterness. We all have that in our life, I think, at times. And so Jeremiah 17.10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You know, we can know, God knows our hearts. It's not like we're going to hide anything from Him. 1 Chronicles 28, 9, and, and I like this verse. This is David talking to Solomon. He says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. So this is David telling his son Solomon before he's to take over as king. Remember, God knows what you're thinking. God knows what's in your heart. He knows your thoughts. And I think it's something maybe we overlook a lot of times is that especially in, in teaching our young people and teaching our old people, God knows our thoughts. You know, it's, it's, I think it's a wonderful thing to be convicted over your thoughts. That means that God is still with you. That means God is still there. He's still working on you. If, if we think certain thoughts and dwell on them, you know, sometimes we may become callous to them. But God knows our thoughts. We look in the Bible, in, in Matthew and in the rest of the Gospels, that there were many times Jesus knew the thoughts of who He was talking to. Look in Matthew chapter 9, verse 4. This was after uh, he had healed a man sick of the palsy. He was lying on the bed, and Jesus, seeing their face, said unto the sick of the palsy, Some be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes, and within themselves, this man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Matthew twelve twenty five says, At this time Jesus answered and said, Oh, wrong verse, sorry. Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So he knew their thoughts. He knew they were saying, Okay, this man is healing people because of the power of the devil. You know, that's, that's what they were thinking. And he knew their thoughts. So God knows our thoughts, and we're going to have to answer for it. Judas might have thought he was pulling one over on Jesus. He might have thought, you know what? I'm going, to turn him, I'm going to turn on him. I'm going to get my 30 pieces of silver. I'm going to live a good life. And this man will be out of my hair. He won't be troubling Israel. But he didn't realize that Jesus knew the whole time what he was going to do. You know, we will have to answer for these thoughts. Like I said, we might can hide or fool people. Okay, I may be fooled. I may have you fooled. But we can't fool God because He knows what we think. He knows what's in our heart. And the thing with that is with our thoughts, people can't see that. People can't hold us accountable. You know, as, as a church, as Christians, we are to hold each other accountable. Okay, our thoughts... We don't know them unless we tell people. Unless we tell people, you know, hey, I've been thinking this way. I need your help. I need you to pray for me. Unless we tell them, nobody else is involved but us and God. Now, how we act, how we, how we act out and the things we do, people see that. They can hold us accountable. But our thoughts, uh, most of the time, that's between us and God. And I think we forget about that sometimes and we try to hide, you know, and not realizing, okay, God knows our thoughts. But that's between us and God, and we're going to have to answer for it. Matthew 12, 35 through 37 says, A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by the words thou shalt be condemned. You know, it's talking about, 
you know, our actions that come from our thoughts. But he also says here, every idle word that men shall speak, they will have to give account of. I imagine that that's more than just your words. Because we know God knows our thoughts. Every idle thought. Every idle action. You know, I, I look at it, and, and with the election coming up, I look at every idle vote will come to account of. You know, uh, the uh, idle hands are the devil's workshop. You know, when we have nothing better to do and, and maybe our thoughts go somewhere they shouldn't, maybe our actions do things we shouldn't, we're going to have to give account to that because every idle word, that means no matter how insignificant you think it is, you're going to have to account for it. Whether it be your thoughts, whether it be lust, whether it be hate, whether it be apathy, whether it be bitterness, you're going to have to give account to that. And, you know, I think, you know, I look back on my life and my thoughts, my actions, you know, I'm glad that I've been forgiven of those because, you know, in, in they're damning, you know, they're condemning. You know, and I think we've all had them at some times. We've talked about it in Bible studies and men's meetings and whatever. You know, men, you know, it's, it's not uncommon. You know, men are, uh, can some consider weak creatures, you know, with their thoughts. But, you know, that's not just, ju not just them alone. We all, I think, have thoughts that condemn us. I think the greatest message that we can think of is, is that with our thoughts and how they might condemn us, we can overcome that. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We can bring our thoughts into captivity and to the obedience of Christ. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay, how do we keep our heart? I think, one, we've got to focus on the great commandment. Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You know, when we put the love of God above everything else, I think that helps our thought life. You know, we can look at Philippians 4, 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things you know dwell on happy thoughts you know for it's what they said in peter pan happy thoughts it makes you fly i was reading a devotional this week from adrian rogers and what he said you know we really can't think of more than one thing at once if you're thinking good thoughts you can't think evil thoughts you know if you're dwelling on things that are pure and just you can't dwell on things that are unholy and evil and of no account. You know, I, I look back, you know, starting, starting on uh, January 1st, I started reading the Bible. And, and I do that every year. Well, I notice it's a whole lot, it was a whole lot easier not to dwell on certain things or not to think evil thoughts or whether it be about somebody or, or whatever it was because most of my free time, I was reading the Bible. You know, but the thing is, we have too many people that when they have free time, they won't read the Bible. Well, let's watch the news, or well, let's check the stock market, or let's watch this ball game. You know, we fill our mind with things that only lead to evil thoughts. You know, if we sit down, you know, if, if I say, all right, I'm not going to read the Bible right now. I'm going to watch the news. I'm going to watch the weather. Well, unless we turn away during commercials, or even on the news for that matter, we're going to see things that take our mind places where it shouldn't. You know, a lot of times, whether it may be people, uh, some celebrity that you don't particularly care for, and when you first see them, they may spawn thoughts of hate. You know, and if we don't sur stick our mind into things like the Bible, things like God's Word and prayer, you know, our thoughts become consumed by the devil. 
you know, when we don't do that, you know, the devil just wants a foot to get in the door. The Bible says, neither give place to the devil. So if the worst thing that we can do is give him a place in our mind. Because as our thoughts are, we are. We look in verse 20 here in 1 John chapter 3. It says, for if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. You know, I'm a firm believer in praying about your thoughts, that, that they don't go where they don't need to, that, uh, that God will replace them. Because the Bible says God is greater than our heart, and He knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. So we can overcome our thoughts because God is bigger than them. And, you know, we've got to remember who, what our thoughts are. That's who we are. And most of the time, they're evil thoughts. That's what the Bible says. But we can be renewed, we can be regenerated into a new person. 2 Corinthians 5 talks about how that if a person is in Christ, he is a new creature, he is a new creation. And that's what we can, that's what we can be through Jesus Christ, and that includes our thoughts. You know, this is something that it doesn't come easy for some people. It doesn't come easy for a lot of people with their thoughts and reining them in and taking their thoughts captive. You know, but it's important. I, I can, especially talking to the young people, because I know we've got a lot of young boys in here. I know what young boys like to think about. You know, we are responsible for our thoughts. You know, we will have to account for that. And even adults, we think we might get past that point. We don't. I don't think we do. Whether it be lust, whether it be hate, whether it be bitterness, whether it be apathy, and a many different more emotions, because how we think... We are. You know, the Bible talks about being slothful. And that becomes in that, the idle words, the idle thoughts, because we're too lazy to do anything else that builds us up. That happens to a lot of us. So, you know, as our thoughts are, that's who we are. And I just pray that everybody here can, can pray, can kind of dedicate their thoughts to God. So as Cleet and Mama come up for the invitation, if, if there's anything that you maybe have trouble reining in, come here and pray about it. Give it to God. I know it's a whole lot easier to control how we act than how we think. But it's just as important, if not more important. So let us stand and sing.